Greetings, my name is Bruce and this is the second in a series of videos explaining downhole tubing disposal. In our last video we discussed the cost benefits of using downhole tubing disposal. In this video we explain how the vertical cutter works and the associated cutting wheels. Our method can use proven cutting wheels like the plumber's cutting wheels shown here. As you can see there are many different sizes and types cutting everything from soft copper to stainless steel. These particular cutting wheels are suited for cutting API casing and tubing. There are many off-the-shelf sizes to choose from and some specialty cutters that even have bearings. Bearings like these improve the cutting performance of the wheels and also improve their longevity. We purchased these cutting wheels from a normal hardware shop and tested their cutting ability on API tubulars. As you see here, we used a normal plumber's cutter and cut 2 and 3 eighths inch API tubing. Cutting it by hand gave us a good feel for the forces that were needed to actually cut through the tubing. And surprisingly, it did not take a lot of force to cut the tubing. As you see here, the plumber's cutter cleanly cut the L80 2 and 3 eighths inch tubing. It took a lot of revolutions to make this cut, but required very little force. Having successfully cut 2 and 3 eighths inch tubing, we decided to move up to L80 5 and a half inch casing, which is also used as tubing in the North Sea. As you can see, the larger casing or tubing, the five and a half inch, took a much bigger plumber's cutter, but was successfully cut just the same. Cutting the tubing by hand gave us a good feel for the force, which was not great, but what we did find out was it took a lot of turns to cut this thick casing. The reason why this plumber's cutting tool took so many revolutions was because it only had a single cutter. This was an important learning for us, and it helped us design our vertical cutting tool. Similar to the cut on the 2 and 3 8 inch tubing, the plumbing cutting wheel made a clean cut on this L80 5 and half inch tubular. We were very excited about the results of this testing because it helped disprove a myth that API tubulars were somehow stronger than other steel tubulars, when in fact they're virtually the same. It's just that the API tubulars have a much thicker wall. It is therefore possible to buy off-the-shelf plumber's cutters to cut API tubulars, provided they have enough depth to get through the wall thickness of the tubing. Now that we've explained plumber's cutting wheels, we have made the following cartoon to show you how our vertical cutter works. This particular version of our vertical cutter is 60 millimeters in diameter, or 2 and 3 eighths inches. A vertical cutter of this size is capable of cutting API tubulars between 3 and a half inch and 9 and 5 eighths inch. When the tool is run into a well, the cutter is in a retracted mode shown here. Once the tool is lowered within the well to the desired depth of the vertical cut, the skate carrying the plumber's cutters is extended. Once the skate is extended, the tool is then lifted up and down. As we learned during testing, it's better to have more cutters, and therefore we've designed the tool so that multiple skates and multiple cutters can be stacked and can cut within the same cut groove to speed up the cutting process. As you see here, our tool has a number of other features that we'll explain. Different colors denote different components. Shafts within the blue housing activate the green arms which move the yellow skate which hold the orange or red cutting wheels. Lighter colored roller bearings are located between the blue housings to allow the assembly to roll with purple connectors connecting the rollers and the housings. We haven't shown the tubing that the vertical cutter will cut so that you can see the various components of the vertical cutter. But let's see what it looks like within the tubing that it will be cutting. Looking downward as if you were looking down a well, you can see that the housing is abrupt against one side of the tubing 
with the extended skate cutter pushed against the other. This is an illustrative look as gravity would pull the heavier housing to the bottom of the tubing with the vertical skate pointed directly upwards. The design is purposely made this way so that you can make multiple runs and always locate to the upper side of the tubing and re-enter or stay within any previous cut tracks. So let's move the camera down the tubing so that we can see how the vertical cutter is situated within it. Once a cut groove is started, the plumber's cutting wheels will stay within the groove as the tool string is lifted up and downwards and progressively cut ever deeper into the wall of the tubular. Broach roller bearings adjacent to the housings roll along the bottom of the tubing while the skates roll along and cut the top of the tubing. With regard to any wax or scale buildup on the inside diameter of the tubing, the ball bearing broach arrangement point loads the rolling and lifts the tool string slightly above the bottom side inside diameter to lift the tool string above modest wax and scale buildup. For heavier wax and scale buildup, you can use larger diameter Go Devil wheels to lift the tool string higher. Now that we've explained plumber's cutting wheels and our vertical cutting tool, let's talk about how they're used in downhole tubing disposal and well abandonment. As I've previously said, this tool is lifted vertically upward and lowered downward to split the tubing. But what is tubing? And why do we need to split it? This is a scale cartoon of five and a half inch tubing. Both tubing and casing are made of two distinct parts. One is the tubular, which is threaded, and the other is shown here, which is the coupling. The tubing is threaded at both ends, and a coupling couples two different pieces of tubing. Couplings are generally made up to a piece of tubing at the factory, so that a coupling is on one end and threaded tubing is on the other. So let's look how this works. A coupling is made up to a piece of threaded tubing. This is generally performed at the factory so that you have a coupling and a tubing made together. The factory coupled tubing is then made up to another piece of factory coupled tubing. I apologize that this sounds pedantic, but it's very important to understand how the tubing string is connected. When our vertical cutter slices tubing, it slices through the tubing, but not the coupling. Therefore, slicing the tubing string effectively disconnects the tubing at the coupling. Disconnecting the tubing string is important because it allows you to push a whole piece of tubing within a split piece of tubing more easily. While it's not that difficult to crush tubing, it's very easy to splay split tubing by pushing a whole piece within the split piece. Splitting the tubing and pushing a whole piece within the split tubing to provide a space is important because it allows you to use slick line and pumps to abandon wells and still meet all regulatory requirements including the 2015 Oil and Gas UK guidelines. Using slick line to abandon a well is important because it allows you to spend thousands instead of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions per drum of cement. As explained in our first video, the volume of cement in the first abandonment plug and the most important one is generally only about five and a half 55 gallon drums of cement. So the question is, how much do you want to spend per drum of cement when you abandon your wells? Thank you for listening. And please watch our first video regarding the cost of well abandonment or the following video, which further explains how downhole tubing disposal can be used to save money in a more environmentally friendly and safer manner. Thank you for watching.